I want to make mention of a couple of things, and that is many of you are already doing this, but that you would continue to pray uh, for Israel. Uh, the Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and uh, let's just continue to keep that in our prayers, just everyone being impacted right now, um, and that you and I will continue to keep our faith in God's Word. You know, a lot of times people will say, what should I be doing? Which, you want to live right, you want to stay right, you want to keep your faith in Jesus um, and your confidence in His Word. Uh, we just continue to pray, amen. Uh, so, I'm so glad that you guys are, are here today. Uh, I do want to continue our series, and I will be mindful of the, of the time. Uh, but I want to talk to you today on uh, the continued subject, have you lost your mind? Can we say that together? Have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? I think sometimes, if we were honest, we would say that we could even question our own selves at times and wonder, have I lost my mind? You know, we call it scatterbrained or we'll say things like, maybe that's just in my head. But wondering, have I lost my mind? When I look at scriptures that talk about our thoughts or our mind, again, in no way do I profess to be a doctor or a medical professional. People would say, Pastor Micah, there are chemical imbalances or it's hormonal or biological or there's physical complications or personalities and in no way do I get in that lane. I just would like as a preacher, as a pastor, to stay in my lane of Scripture, of the Spirit of God, and in no way am I saying it's always an either-or thing. I do think that sometimes it can be both. But when it comes to a scriptural perspective, what does the Bible say about my mind? What does the Bible say about my thoughts? When Romans 12 talks about not being conformed but be transformed, when the Bible says bringing thoughts into obedience, when Scripture would remind us the importance of our mind and our thoughts, and that's what I would like to talk about today. As we look at God's Word today and we talk about have you lost your mind, sometimes we will hear messages like this and it will be about our individual selves. We will hear God's Word and we will think, this is just for me. This is about my spiritual health. There are other times we will hear God's Word and, and it's actually for you to help someone else. So as you listen to God's Word, not just today, when you hear messages, always be thinking, is this for me personally for my spiritual health or am I meant to hear this because I am supposed to help someone else, maybe in your subdivision or your home. Maybe it's someone that's at your school or on your job. When we look at Scripture, the Bible would tell us in Colossians 3, 2, set your minds, set your minds. We have made hundreds of these reminders, the Scripture, Colossians 3 and 2, and then it's simply saying set your mind. Hundreds of reminders that we have made for people to be able to take these and, and to wear just as a gentle reminder to make sure that we are setting our minds on things above and not on things that are on earth. When you look at your mind and my mind and how it can be impacted by what we hear, an MD by the name of Timothy R. Jennings wrote in his book, The God-Shaped Brain, he tells of a story of a man by the name of Sam Schumann. And this MD writes that Sam was diagnosed with liver cancer and told that he only had months to live. A few months after Sam's death, the autopsy revealed the doctors were wrong. He had only one small tumor contained within the liver. It was not life-threatening. And in the book, and I'm quoting, M.D. Jennings writes this, Sam Schumann did not die from liver cancer. He died from believing he was dying of liver cancer. 
Now, I know that this is a unique situation written in this book about the power of thoughts, but I would like to draw your attention to the fact that our thoughts, or what we believe about those thoughts, can change us mentally, physically, and at times even spiritually. I remember reading years ago the story of a football team. Those that know me know my love for sports and chaplaincy and my kids play sports. But I read this story years ago about a football team that they had decided to do a study on telling these football players that they had drank contaminated water. The water was not contaminated. They just wanted to see what the outcome would be, the observation would be of them hearing that. The study that I read years ago went on to say that several of them ended up in the ER. Multiple players were vomiting, several saying that they were nauseous. All of these different byproducts simply from telling them you have drank contaminated water. Thoughts are a very powerful thing. Now in life, we have a lot of helmets. I have brought just a few today. Those of you that do welding or work like that, may, maybe you have worn a helmet like this that they would say for the sake of protecting your vision or your eyes or your face. For those of you that ski, you have children or grandchildren maybe that ski, my, my kids ski. This, this is a, a ski helmet that my boy would wear. There are a lot of helmets, and I, I didn't bring all of them, but you could have bicycling helmets, or those of you that like to ride motorcycles, Harley Davidson helmet. Some people would wear helmets with that. If, if you play sports, there's batting helmets and football helmets. This is something maybe if you were going out to target practice or shoot, some people will actually say for the sake of your ears, your hearing, the ringing, that you want to cover your ears while you are doing that. You, you have all of these helmets that people could wear here. You would have a construction helmet, and, and it says on the helmet, helmet, lead with safety, safety. I remember years ago when they asked if I would come and pray over some new construction on the interstate. They were building an outlet, and it's over $100 million from what I remember. And they, they'd ask if I would come and pray over the property in the beginning of the construction. I remember going there that day, and we had to go through the access points and, and the fencing, and you know, I had to put a helmet on as we go out there to pray. And I would just submit to you today that in life, from a young age, could be your, you know, your child that's learning to ride a bicycle and sometimes people will say, put on a helmet or if they go out on a quad or a side by side, put on a helmet. What I would submit to you today is in life, from a young age, a lot of times, people will tell you, you need to protect your head or you need to protect your ears or you need to protect your eyes but then when it comes to the spiritual sense, I don't know if we always think enough about or talk enough about the importance of protecting our heads spiritually. The Cleveland Clinic says that we have about 70,000 thoughts a day. TLEX says out of those thoughts, 70, 80% of those are negative. When you think about your thoughts, they say that we have an average of 6.5 thought transitions per minute. And that you and I are capable, give or take, of only thinking about four things. What stood out to me in this particular study is that they said you and I could be repeating the same negative thoughts to ourselves more than 5,000 times a day. 
that out of those thousands of thoughts, some of them are on repeat. That we are saying the same things to ourselves over and over again. Now I would ask you today, do you play certain things on repeat? Do you play certain thoughts on repeat? What they said, what they done. Pastor Mike, if you only knew. Is that something that is on repeat in your mind? Is that something that is playing over and over and over again? I think marketing and branding realizes how powerful it is what I'm sharing with you right now. That they know if they can get something, we, we would say this, the cliche we would say is this, I just have that song stuck in my head. How many's ever heard that before? Is that that song stuck in my head? They realize that if they could say it enough times and you could hear repetitively, I want my baby back, baby back. <laughs> Chilies, baby back ribs. They know years ago, Campbell's would come up with if we could get enough times this thought, this jingle, uh-oh. Some of you are dating yourselves. <laughs> they would know that if we could just get your mind to process over and over and over again that every kiss Begins with K. Or that the best part of waking up sometimes it's it's not even the full words. It could just be like ba da ba ba ba. Or, you may not even know a lot about Nationwide, but you would know that Nationwide. <laughs> See, we're like adamant, like on our side. <laughs> or you would know with State Farm that they would just say, like a good neighbor. How... How does that happen that young and old alike in a room over and over again are able to finish off the jingle, the line, the statement, the branding? Now I want, I want you just for a moment today to process the fact that most importantly today is not McDonald's or insurance. Most importantly today is not SpaghettiOs or some jewelry from K Jewelers. If your mind is able to know all of these things on repeat, what are the chances that your thoughts or even the enemy is able to replay over and over and over again in your mind? And here comes the hurt again. Here comes the pain again. Here comes the words again. Here comes the letdown again. And when it says these thoughts could play on repeat in our minds, what are the chances that you and I are allowing life to just play repeat over, 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 over and over again? Things that are pulling us down, that are dragging us down. No wonder the Bible would tell us that you and I have to take thoughts and we have to bring them into captivity or into obedience to Christ that these thoughts will come, but they don't have to 
consume. I've heard it said like this, that we will control our thoughts or our thoughts will control us. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight, those who are dominated, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So, letting your sinful nature control your mind, where does it lead to? It leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Let me ask you a question today. Who controls you? If you personalize it, who controls me? Or maybe you could ask this, this question today. Where am I being led? Now we call it a train of thought. A train of thought. The scripture here says if you are led by the natural, if you are led by the flesh, that's going to take you somewhere. If you are led by the spirit, that's going to take you somewhere. So it's only fair to ask who has access to my mind? Who is the leader? Who is the one that is deciding the direction of my life? If I'm gonna get on this train, I would like to know where it's going. When you think about who has access to your mind, is it the news? Is it social media? Is it music? I've already shared with you that something as simple as ba da ba ba ba. What about all the songs you're putting in your mind? The lyrics, the lines of them. Is it movies? Is it social media? Is it toxic talk? Is it negativity? Or maybe today when we think about who has access to your mind, maybe you would say, you know, it's a Bible app or it's you version or it's worship music. It's positivity or spirituality, but it's a fair question that every one of us would ask ourselves if our mind has an access point, an entrance and exit, what is coming and going out of my mind? Who and what am I allowing into my mind? They call it metacognition, which means to think about what you are thinking about. Maybe today as we share 70,000 thoughts and 500 of them intrusive or negative, up to 5,000 of them being on repeat. A thought past 14 seconds, give or take, could become a meditation. And three or four hours later, you're still thinking about what someone said or what someone done or what happened. And it's one thing to hear all of that, but what are some tools that that you and I could utilize to say, okay, I wanna be transformed. I wanna be renewed in my mind. Pastor Mike, I wanna bring it into captivity, into obedience. Like I wanna do better about thinking about what I'm thinking about. What are some tools that I could utilize for that? I wanna give you a few practical things today. The, the first is just what this scripture said. Set your mind. Set your mind. You know, sometimes you have to reset certain things. Our water softener at our house was acting up. And I talked to the company that installed it. And, and you know, because my kids are saying, we're tasting salt, too much salt in there. And all these different things. They were saying, you know, sometimes you got to reset it. Do this, do this. Reset this. Runs it through a flush. It's been fine. From a reset. Like what would happen if some of the things, I know it's not salt, water, and all of, but what, what would happen if some of the things in your life, the Holy Spirit would say, all you need is a reset? Like I know you're feeling like your day is down and discouraging and it's fallen apart, but what if you need to flush that out of your system? <laughs> you need a reset. Set your mind. Here's, here's a practical thing to think about. Is just, you know, my friend, Pastor Kevin Goff, he says he sets multiple alarms every single day. He does one at morning, does one at noon. He used to do it every 30 minutes. But alarms to remind himself, think about what you are thinking about. Another practical thing that maybe you would consider trying is what several say, they, they call it this, they call it fasting 
negativity, fasting negativity. It's actually amazing when you hear about it or read about it because they say that just telling yourself you're fasting negativity, it comes on the video, the story, the, the TikTok, the news, and you're like, you know what? Because they, they said you actually uh, give yourself a manageable time frame. I, I, I was listening where it said take seven days and just say I'm gonna fast negativity for seven days. I'm not watching that, I'm fasting negativity. It also said if you have someone that loves you, it's not a demeaning thing, it's not a degrading thing, it's not something where that spouse or that family member or friend is telling you like, here you go again, and no. But if you have someone who loves you and cares and knows that it's hard for you to have a positive life with a negative mind, that if you have someone that could just tell you, hey, just a reminder, what you're saying right now, what you're speaking, I'll never amount to anything and we'll never make it and it's always falling apart. Why does this always happen to me? I always get the short end of this thing. Just someone that cares about you that, that, that could say, hey, we're fasting negativity. And so again, maybe that doesn't apply for everybody, but when it comes to you, maybe something as simple as saying, I wanna try fasting negativity. One thing that I have been helped with immensely over the years is something that my pastor wrote years ago. He just broke down the letters of the word faith. F-A-I-T-H, focus on the positives, affirm yourself, imagine God doing something good. Remember, 80% of your thoughts could think negative. So you have to work sometimes to imagine God doing something good. T, trust God always, and H, hope for the best. That is something practical, whether it's putting it in your Bible, by your nightstand, on your desk at work, maybe you put it in your, your locker room, in your locker. Maybe there's a place that you can set this on your dashboard or something to remind yourself the just will live by faith. One thing that I have read that I work on, even as a pastor, I continue to work on this. Maybe this will help you. There are studies out that are called the study of mindfulness. Everyone say mindfulness. Now I know this is super practical, but here's what I would like you to think about mindfulness. They say that most of our worries, some people have this number as high as 90%. Most of our worries are based on the past or the future. So because our mind is pulled backward or forward, sometimes we struggle to stay in the, in the now. And so you could be in the room with your children, but you're not really, not really in the room with your children. Maybe your spouse is talking, but if at any point they were to say, do you hear what I'm saying, are you listening? The reality is we don't always hear everything they're saying because we are not mindful. Mindfulness, again, is super simplistic, but it actually, the one uh, thing I was reading was saying, sometimes it's as simple as telling your eyes, I'm gonna look at you when we're talking. When I shake your hand, right here, because if not, you and I can get out of the now. Our minds are racing on all of these, these different things and sometimes it's just taking some practical steps to say, Holy Spirit, help me to stay in the now. I wanna be mindful, give us this day. I know I wanna think about tomorrow and next week and next month and next year, but give me this day my daily bread. Let me enjoy it. The reality is life's a vapor. We don't have promises of tomorrow. Help me not to lose my today because I'm so focused on my tomorrows. Regina, who has an office next to mine, which is a blessing, has spent six plus years in the educational world studying the brain, the mind, our thoughts. She shares with me, and this is so good, but she shares with me what she calls, and others, they call this the ABCs when it comes to your thoughts. I would think that 
If the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart right now when the light comes on for these ABCs, I think out of your 70,000 thoughts and up to 80% negative and 500 of them intrusive, I think the Holy Spirit could help you right now with some simple ABCs. I really believe this. Here are the ABCs. A means that there is an action or what they would call an activating event. B is your belief in the action or the activating event. C is the consequence or the feeling that is going to come from that belief system. She gave me an example of what that could look like. She said if someone was to say, here's the action, here's the activating event. Pastor Micah walked by me and didn't say anything to me. He just walked right by. That's the action. The belief is that you are now going to tell yourself, I know he's upset at me. I've always known he didn't like me. He likes other people more than me. I guess I'm not valued and cared for. Well, must be people more important than me. Now all of a sudden, this action or activating event has turned into the belief, and then the consequence is now going to be that you could start telling yourself, you know, even my last church, people have always done that to me. If I go back, I've had coaches, I've had teachers all the way to my childhood. Now think about it in your life. I've had people even this week that have shared with me, Pastor Micah, this, is, this week, this is my place of employment. I had several people that I relationship with, that I cared about, that they actually took their business to someone else. And they began sharing with me this week that their minds started telling them, well, maybe they're not as good as the other business. Maybe they're not as quality. Maybe they don't measure up as what those other people done. Now all of a sudden we are creating a belief system that is off of an action. Now what are the actions in your life? Someone didn't show up to your party. Maybe you felt like you didn't get a gift or you weren't remembered. Maybe it's Christmas and you're like the other family members, the other siblings, they always get more, they always get better. So the action, Micah walks by me in the lobby that the action is a real thing, but in Regina's words, we cannot just, and this is very helpful to me even, but she said we cannot just attack the action. If you and I attack the action, the reality is maybe you're frustrated with the gift. Maybe you didn't get the promotion at your job, or maybe some clients did switch over. Maybe they didn't get the playing time, your son or daughter. Maybe someone did walk by, but you and I cannot just attack the action. Regina said we have to attack or confront or challenge the belief. Because if we do not confront the belief, it's called your core thoughts or your core schema, but if we do not confront that, then it creates ruts in our brain that is going to continue to lead us down these paths a feeling like and, and telling ourselves, I don't matter, I'm not valued, because those paths will take us down and tear us down. So the belief needs to be challenged. You say, that sounds great, how do I challenge the belief? The Bible says in Philippians 4, 8, finally my brothers and sisters always, always, always think about what? Your assumption? Always think about what? Your presumption? They call it analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis. That, that, that if you and I dwell so much and so long on these things, it actually is going to hold you and I hostage. How do we think about what is true? 
So ask yourself, if we go back to the analogy, Regina gave me five questions, and I hope this can help you today. She gave me five questions to ask yourself. When you have the activating event, this happens on your job, this happens you know, at school, this happens with your child you know, at the game, or this, with their playing time, or this happens with the gift, or your family, whatever that is, you have the activating event. Instead of attacking the action, Micah walked past me and didn't acknowledge me, didn't talk to me. What's really at play here is not so much even the action, it's the belief that I am allowing to be created from the action. She gave me five questions when it comes to confronting or challenging the belief. Here's the first question, is it true? Is it true? The part that is true is Micah walked past. But what you and I cannot do is we cannot say, start saying it's true when it comes to I'm not valued, I'm not appreciated, no one cares. The second question is this, if we take this thought to court, do we have enough evidence to win our case? We have several judges here in our church and I was talking to one of them even today about this question, today. I'm asking him, if, if we were in court and we say, no one loves me, everyone's out to get me, I know they're spouting, spiting me, maybe it's because of this or that, or if, if we bring all of that to court and we're, we're in that setting and it's like, okay, so what brought us to this point? How do you know you're not loved, you're not valued, not cared for, you don't matter, everyone's out to get you? How do you know that? Well, he walked by me in the lobby. And then what? There is not always a then what. The then what is what I allowed to start playing over and over and over and over in my, in my head. And the consequences that can come out of that. The third question she said is ask yourself, is my thought based on facts or feelings? Number four, am I taking this personally? Number five, Am I jumping to conclusions? I had an action or an activating event, but I allowed my beliefs to run wild. I got on that train of thought. I started assuming it's probably be because of this and then this, and before I knew it, I am at, I am at this consequence now that could take me back five, 10, 20, 30 years, and I could be saying, this is how it's always been. This was my childhood, this was in school, this was prior relationships, this was. Because you and I don't always, I know you're not gonna put on a helmet today, I get that. But I don't know if you and I always take it serious enough when asking God, with your word and with your spirit, will you help me bring these thoughts into obedience to Christ. They say that when you and I do this, we are challenging our thoughts with the truth. Here are your thoughts, here is the truth. And you and I are challenging our thoughts with God's truth. Your thoughts start telling you, I've never been good enough. Your thoughts start telling you, I'm not good enough to worship, I'm not good enough to serve, I'm not good enough for a relationship, I'm not, I'll never, we even say, you hear people say, I'll never be good enough for this job, I'll never be good enough to meet a good man, I'll never be good enough. And you challenge your thoughts with God's truth. God's truth is you're the apple of his eye. God's truth is he could number the hairs on your head. God's truth is that he has you in the palm of his hand. God's truth is when he looks at the sparrows or the lilies or the care for them, how much more your heavenly father cares for you. That's the truth of God's word. But our thoughts will start telling us no one loves you and everyone hates you. And when I was a kid, they used to say, go eat worms or whatever. Nowadays, people be like, what? 
Are you putting your thoughts up against God's truth? Here's what the Bible says in Isaiah 26, verse 3. Lord, you keep those people safe who continue to trust in you. You give them peace in their, you give them peace in their, give them peace in their minds. As we pray today, if you would do me a favor, just with eyes closed all over the room. I would like to pray over your mind. The Bible talks about serving God whole body, whole spirit. It also says to serve God with our mind. What are the thoughts that if the Holy Spirit just shone a light on our mind and thoughts today that greater than any judge that attends here, and I love them, but greater than any judge in the natural, the Bible says he's our righteous judge. What would the righteous judge say today? That's not true. That's not true. You're not unlovable. What would the righteous judge say today? That's not true. You totally could be used. You totally could be engaged. You totally could serve. What would the righteous judge say? That's not true. You haven't gone too far and you haven't done too much. What would the righteous judge say today? If he was to say, why are you letting these thoughts so out of control? You took what they said or they done or they walked by you. I know it's an analogy, but what would the righteous judge tell you right now? Would the righteous judge tell you, I gotta throw this out of court? You took this action or activating event and you let your mind run wild. Maybe today, the Holy Spirit, the righteous judge is saying, hey, can I bring you back to perfect peace? Can I bring you back to perfect peace? Pastor Micah, I just know everyone's out to get me, unfriending and unfollowing and staring and I walk in the room, I just know. Do you? Or are there some areas in your life you've let your thoughts get out of control and if you were honest, you've lost your mind. And God is saying, I wanna bring you back to perfect peace. I wanna bring you back to perfect peace. If you'll let me, I wanna bring you back to perfect peace. If you're here today, and whether personally you would say, Pastor Mike, I, I want the perfect peace. I want my mind to be stayed on him. You know, the Bible does talk about helmets as well. It's not these helmets, but it talks about the helmet of salvation, the word of God, the spirit of God. What if today God is trying to get your attention to say, I, I want your thoughts, I want your mind, I, I want to give you that peace. Whether it's you personally or maybe someone that you want to pray for right now, but would you just raise your hand so I can pray for you today? If you would say, I need God to rein some of this in, hands are going up all over the room. I, I want God to control thoughts. I want God to help me. Give me tools, give me wisdom. Whether it's fasting, negativity, hands are still going up. Whether it's setting alarms, whether it's thinking about what I'm thinking about, whether it's ABCs, whether it's faith. Hands are still going up. God, I pray over every person, whether it's them personally saying, God, I need your help, or whether it's someone that's saying, I, I wanna be used to help someone I care about that they need help in their mind or thoughts. God, I pray even right now that the Holy Spirit would do what only the Holy Spirit can do. Would you take your word today? Would you take these principles? Would you anoint them and help people in their mind and their thoughts? I pray these things in Jesus' name.